I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another week of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How was your weekend, Dave? It was good. It was good. How was yours? Very good. You kept me busy. Yeah, I try to. You do. You're keeping me pretty damn busy, buddy. So this week, our topic is rebuilding. And today's Motivational Monday, we're going to discuss moving out of conflict. This week's Health Huddles, we have a special interview with Dr. Tom and Clendon. And we're going to discuss putting cancer treatment in a brand new light and rebuilding your health. Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we will talk about momentum. And this week's Connection Thursday, we're going to discuss connecting faith. And Friday, you know what Friday is, it's the special Osho Day. I'm getting a few comments on that book. I'm excited. I uh, love it. So we're going to continue our book study of Osho's book, Emotional Wellness. Before we get started, let's talk about the event. And things are going, you're doing a great job, by the way, I want to tell you that. Because I know it's all been you. It's a lot of work. Yes. It's been good. Especially, you know what? I got to say, with the team that we have, Jeff, Christine, Lee, you, everything has been I'm really awesome. impressed by how you're, you're handling it because it's the first time you've really taken something by yourself. And it, yeah. looks, and it looks like it's going to sell out, which is kind of cool, too. So the event is November 3rd and 4th. It is called Awaken Connections. And this event has a distinct purpose, and it's going to fit into this this uh, week's podcast. And this purpose is to set your 2019 with focus in all five life categories. So in the career category, we're bringing in the keynote speaker, Mark Menard, the author of The Story of You. He's also the host of Elevating Beyond podcast. If you haven't heard that podcast yet, please he has incredible guests on there. And he's the founder of a wonderful organization called Dreamshine. He's going to be talking on, talking on the danger of not doing your dream. In the finance category, we're bringing in the impeccable Cindy Brown, the author of the new book, Pragmatic Prosperity, and the host of the podcast, Unlocking the Secret of Living Rich. Another podcast we highly recommend from the Stress Mastery family. In the health category, I can't wait to hear his talk. And it's Billy Weiss, the author of the new book, The 21st Century Pharmacist. And he's going to be talking about how to create wellness. And he really gets into detail about medications and different things that are a lot of myths he's going to dispose of. And in the relationship category, we have Monty Taylor, the author of The Power of Heart Language, and a premier executive and business coach. And he will be talking to us on different types of relationships and connection. And in the personal and spiritual development, we have the impeccable Paul Baudry, international music star, new album out called New Tomorrows. And Paul is the creator of a new coaching program called called intentional collaboration. Now, we may have something special for everybody next week, right? He's working on a, a brand new ebook that he can introduce what he's doing for people for our for our tribe. I think he's going to have that out next week for us. Yeah, it's, it's the way that he explained it is a, it's a snippet of what to expect when you create that awareness that he is trying to bring with personal development. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and if you guys, if you want to go back to any of the episodes um, from Awaken Connections interviews, you can hear these speakers. And so, and I'll be hosting the event, and I'm going to speak on connection and how to create drive, focus, and integrity. So, it's going to be fun, and this week uh, is is a fa one of my favorite weeks. Let me hand this over to you, Dave, so I don't lose it. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Loser, don't lose that. So this week, we're going to talk and focus on rebuilding. And today, I want to discuss how what it, it's like of moving out of conflict. And so we start out with the definition to rebuild is to build something after it has been destroyed or damaged. Now, in most instances, we think of rebuilding after what? A natural disaster, right? We think of Michael hitting and rebuilding. But rebuilding is actually a process of growing ourselves. 
Rebuilding happens in all five life categories. To become a master, and that's what we teach in Stress Mastery, is to become a master, you must master the survival energies of the level one beta force energies. And you must master stress. And this is done through growth. All masters live in the growth energies. And the mastery of self starts with the 200 energy of courage. In courage, this is where you become alert, confident, and focused. And as you master that, you move up into the energy of 250 neutrality. This is where you become flexible, motivated, spontaneous. As you master that, you move into the energy of 310 willingness. This is where you become optimistic, abundant, and gracious. And then you move up into those surrendered energies. And this is where stress mastery happens. And it starts with the 350 energy acceptance. When you move into that energy, this is where you become surrendered, harmonious, and you have well-being. And that takes you into the 400 reason energies. This is where you become secure, enhanced, and intuitive. You see, rebuilding moves you out of your comfort zone. That's the idea. And it doesn't have to wait for a disaster for this to start. You understand that? Yeah. You know, because people think that it has to be so if you look at the five categories in rebuilding right so let's say we take career rebuilding a career can come from a loss of job or a change in industry or it could come from a planned transition into creating and rebuilding your career to match your purpose and values you have a choice that's what the event is about right in finances you can rebuild your finances can come from a major loss of money due to illness job change, divorce, something like circumstance, or you can create a planned rebuilding of your finances by getting out of debt, using some type of system, or increasing your income through investment or a side hustle. Anybody coming to the event are gonna learn both of those. So if you're looking to take and master your finances, you can rebuild it. That's what Cindy will be teaching us. And your health. Rebuilding your health can come after a serious disease or illness. Or you can start rebuilding with a plan designed to help you regain your health consciously. Relationships. Rebuilding your relationships can come after infidelity or a complete disassociation. Or you can create some actions that enhance connection and communication and you can rebuild relationships. And personal development. The fifth cat life category. Rebuilding your personal growth can come after a huge failure or a state of depression or you can get a plan, a coach to help you maneuver through your comfort zone to live in those growth energies. It's really a choice to rebuild any category. You must do a couple things. Number one, you have to move out of conflict. And we're gonna talk about that today, conflict. Number two, you have to be able to get out of the negative energies. And number three, you need to get out of the victim mode, the poor me. Mm -hmm. that, without that, you don't rebuild. Do you agree? Got anything you want to say on that? No. Yeah, I think it's uh, understanding that rebuilding means you have an opportunity. I think that's the big thing. I think it's so important because I don't, I don't know. I keep reinventing myself. I, don't, I keep rebuilding my life over and over again. And it's, and it's a ball. I'm having a blast doing it, I right? I, I, I'm <laughs> I in a really group. Right tell. now, I'm in I'm in one of my... I, I, it's kind of like when you, you're mining and you hit the vein and you like hit the gold vein, right? That's where I am right now. I hit the vein. I hit the vein. <laughs> you did. I'm on a roll. So let's talk about this a little bit. How does this happen? Rebuilding starts with... And, and you can disagree with me on this day, but I think it's pretty cool. I'm kind of putting this a different way. Rebuilding starts with expanding your identity and your circle of responsibility. And this, understanding this, this expands your influence. And with an expansion of identity comes higher actions and more control of your life. So now I'm going to spin control around a little bit. Because when I say you comes from higher actions and more control of your life, this is not the want of control. This is focus and control of your actions. It, that when you control your actions, this means you're setting a plan. And more importantly, something the most important habit you can build, you're building 
the habit of integrity to follow the plan. So this is a little different. And this starts with accepting responsibility for everything in your life. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So action and responsibility are actually tied to each other. So if you think about it, to become successful, you must treat success like you are in control of it. Success is not something that happens to you or it's not something that happens to a few who get lucky. No, success is something that happens for you. And that's important to understand. When we decide to rebuild anything in our life, we must take charge so success happens because of us. Because we can, I'm going to tell you, we outwork, we deal with challenges and problems. moment that you start to make a change, you better be ready to go to work and you better be ready for problems. So when you're looking to build a life, we want to outwork everybody that's involved. We follow a plan and this is important. We follow a plan, we tweak the plan, we follow the new plan, tweak that plan until we arrive at our destined place that we set in our minds before we ever started the rebuilding process. That's the secret. How many times have we retweaked this plan since we started this company? Oh, God. How do you it's think? It's not even the same company if yep. you look at it. If you, you look know. at the way it starts, but it's all going in the direction where it's going to end exactly where we said yeah. it would end. But you see how this process is ongoing every day. This process must have one thing, integrity of action. You have to have integrity of action, which means you're acting. You're doing what you say you're going to do, and you must accept responsibility for every single thing that happens. So when we begin, like I said, when we begin any type of rebuilding, we are creating change. Change creates resistance. Resistance will attract so-called challenges or problems. The key in accepting responsibility, people, is it puts you in a state of control. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I, I had a coaching client uh, about six, seven months ago, and I told her, like, you have a really big problem with control, control, control. And then one time I said, yeah, everything I've done in my life, I've controlled where it's going. She was like, you can't control anything. I was like, no, no, no. The actions and the steps that I take daily point and, me in the direction, and, but I'm not forcing it. So let's talk about that. That's perfect, David. Let's talk about that because that's called the state of control. Remember what state is. It's an energy. Right? So the state of control keeps you focused and moving forward toward your goals. And the state of control makes you responsible for your success. Very different from the want of control. Because the want of control creates chaos and it causes blaming the outside circumstances and causes you to blame, complain, and justify why you can't make it work. It's not your fault. You can't keep moving forward because of the natural disaster. I was hit by a hurricane. Now, everything I was working is done. Poor me. Now, I don't want to downplay what has happened here in the panhandle, here in Florida, right? But I do want to challenge you and anybody listening to this to accept responsibility, responsibility in how you respond and act. We all have the power to respond, to move forward, and to rebuild. After Hurricane Andrew, I talked about it a couple weeks ago, I lost basically almost everything. But after Hurricane Andrew, I had to accept responsibility for my employees, even though I wasn't allowed into the business because of structural damage. I had to accept responsibility for my family, even though we lost our home. I had to take care of them. I actually moved them out. I had to take care of them. I had to accept responsibility for my clients, even though I had all these so-called problems. And most important, I had to accept responsibility for how I was going to react to it all. And it was during this rebuilding time that I had to, and I created my next level of business. But the whole time that I was going through this, I was responsible for it all. For me, for my health, for my relationships, for my growth, my success, my rebuilding. 
I had to be responsible. You have to understand it. You're responsible. You can't sit there. I saw so many people become victims. I saw people celebrate becoming victims because they could get the insurance money. They could, I saw so many people doing that. And they, and they made all the excuses why life didn't work for them anymore. Yeah, and especially, like, if you get those people, there's a difference between those who are like, all right, you know what? This happened. I'm getting insurance money. What we're doing next? Kind of like yeah. follow the next I week. got insurance money. Yeah. I took that insurance money and I rebuilt. Of yeah, course. It's the mindset. But they were like, you know, now they don't have to go to work. They're excited. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, it's the opposite. You understand? It's the opposite. You're responsible. If you want success, you have to be responsible. Understand. Rebuilding is about moving out of conflict. Let's talk about that for a second. All conflict, all of the lower poor me energies comes from our thoughts, not our circumstances. I'm going to repeat it. All conflict, all lower poor me energies comes from our thoughts, not our circumstances. This is why we teach what we teach. When you name your ego, it's an exercise of creating awareness. You will begin, the first time you name your ego, you will then begin to see your thoughts and the conflict that your thoughts are causing. So you have one thought is telling you it's not your fault. It's everyone keeping you down. It's the government. It's the situation. These thoughts want you to complain and blame others. Then you all of a sudden have another thought that is telling you to do something, to change something, be responsible. Then the other thought tells you that you can't because you had this happen or that happen. It's all day long these thoughts are coming. So when you begin to watch your ego, that's why you name it, you begin to create awareness. Part of you wants one result. You'll see this very clearly. And another part of you wants another. And you feel that you have to choose between these two. And this is what causes conflict. So conflict is defined as a serious disagreement or an argument. The thing is, you are having an argument with who? Exactly, Dave. They can't see you shaking your head, but it's the truth. The lack of speaking. Who say are it. yes? Who are you having an argument with? You guys got to stop and pause for a second. Pause plan that. Who are you arguing with? If you watch it closely, your thoughts. Watch them closely. You will see it's all about the ego and its survival. That's all it is. So the ego will play both sides of the fence. So you say to yourself, you know you need to get moving and start taking care of yourself and get healthy. So you set the alarm, get up or to you set the alarm to get up early, and you're gonna start to walk. The alarm goes off, you hear the voice in your head, and the voice says, you know it's gonna be a very stressful day and you really need to sleep in. We can start this tomorrow. Ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. Right? People. It's the same voice. The ego's job is to keep you in conflict. So here your voice is telling you that, well, I need to get in shape. And then the next time your voice is telling you, no, sleep in. Don't do it. Do it tomorrow. It's the same voice. It's designed. The ego survives by keeping you in conflict. So you never rebuild. You never grow. You never change. It's designed to keep you in conflict. So how do we get out of conflict? It's simple. You don't embrace either side of the argument. You don't have to choose right or wrong. You don't have to choose good or bad. You find a place of neutrality and you get and act according to your plan. You get on the plan. You get on there. That's how you do it. You do this by connecting head, heart, and hand. This is what I'm going to teach you guys at the event. This is something, it's very precise. By the way, it's not complicated and it's not hard. The ego wants you to think this is too hard. I can't do it. That's bullshit. It's not hard. I'm telling you guys, it's not hard. So let's go back to it. You know you need to get moving and take care of yourself. So you need to start exercising and get your health. So you set the drive by working with the head. So you set a detailed plan. You set the goals and you get clear what you want. Now the head is set. 
You then take this set drive of the head and you connect it to the heart. You set the plan with connection to your purpose, your values, and most important, you begin to use your imagination in detail that the plan you set is realized. In other words, it's done. In the plan you set, the alarm gets you up, gets up early. The plan you set is to set the alarm, get up early, and walk. That's in your plan. The alarm goes off. The voice tells you, you know, it's going to be a stressful day. You need to sleep in. But you have the heart connected, so you have focus. And you are connected with this heart and purpose. And you see the voice. But take responsibility for your plan. And this is what activates integrity of the hand. And what do you do? You get up and you go and walk. That's how it works, people. You have to create connection. That's what stops procrastination. Procrastination is conflict. It's when procrastination is when you know you should do something, but you don't do it. That's conflict, right? Mm -hmm. To get out of conflict. You have to have connection. You have to understand how the head works, how the ego functions. But more importantly, David, you got to understand how the heart works and how what your purpose is and why do you want to get up and walk, right? And then, and how does imagination work? Then the hand works. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that was something I struggled with a lot, like losing weight. It was like, all right, you, you deserve to eat that. And then I eat that and like, wow, you're horrible for eating that. So I'm like, you know what? You're right. Every and I dieter. Away and I'm like, you're throwing away food. It was just like, no, yeah, stop. every dieter's been through it, right? And it's not just dieting, it's every category. Mm -hmm. So people know they want to advance their career, but they don't do the they don't take the steps to advance their career. People know they're not happy in their job, but they're afraid to move out of that job because they will lose their security or whatever. They don't create a plan of transition. With money, it's all the time. People usually don't even know their money. I can't wait to hear Cindy and see Cindy's new book. I really can't because money, people have conflict with money. Money's the root of all evil. Money gives me freedom. <laughs> I've had people in workshops go through the exercises we take them through and literally have that written down. I believe that money's the root of all evil. I believe money gives me freedom. I go, how does those beliefs work together? <laughs> That's the ego, people. That's the conflict. So understand this. This is so important. When we create connection, we create, when we're in charge, we create the now, the presence, the awareness. There is no conflict when you are present. In the now, there's no conflict. Connected, when you're connected to the heart, there is no conflict. In the moment, there is nothing wrong. In the now, you don't have a stressful day. In the moment in connection, there is no problems. There's no issues. There's nothing wrong in your life when you are present. All the poor me stories stop. That's what it does. It stops. That's what connection does. Now, that doesn't mean that the voice stops. I want you guys to understand this. This is important. The ego is still going to try to control you. Mm -hmm. the, that's because the ego has to try to control you to stay alive. So it's going to bring you new programs of lack and programs you can't do this anytime you're trying to rebuild anything in your life. And that's what's dangerous about a, a big disaster like Hurricane Michael is that people get stuck in that poor me energy. They become victims and they want handouts and they want this. And what happens, it just builds the poor me energy. And again, I'm not discounting what they're going through because I went through it. So I understand exactly what they're going through. Exactly. You know? And so the thing is, there's always a choice. You guys are not victims. Not one of you out there listening to this is a victim. It's a story that's in your head. The ego keeps you in these stories to keep you in these energies of victimhood. And you can't have success unless you're in a state of control. And that control means, ah, I see you up there, Barry, who's my ego. I see you, Barry. Ah, not happening, buddy. I'm moving forward. I'm getting up and going to the gym. I'm doing this. I'm acting. No, Barry, it's not, you're not winning this battle. Does that make sense to you, David? Yeah, the big thing for me, I remember hearing when uh, my stepmom 
she had leukemia and after she went through it, the, the doctor goes, hey, congratulations, you're no longer a cancer victim, you're a cancer survivor. It's the same way with like, why would you tell yourself you're a victim of this instead of saying, well, I'm a survivor of that or I'm fighting through this. It's just the mindset game that you're playing with yourself and how much control like your ego is having. Exactly. The ego is flipping things back and forth on you all the time because that's how the ego survives. Now, there's, uh, I don't want to get into the whole program because you guys know this program. You've been listening long enough. But the important thing is the voice in your head is going off the programs that you're holding in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. If you want to have positive voice, you got to put positive programs in. Yeah. But more importantly, there's a point where you don't even want the positive voice. Mm -hmm. You just want no voice. But that's down the road. First, you want to get rid of the negative, put some positive in there, and then go to the next level. So rebuilding starts with you. Accepting responsibility for you. Accepting responsibility for your health, your energy. Accepting responsibility for your mind, your moods, the state that you're in. Accept your responsibility for your life situation. Stop being a victim. Stop blaming your wife. Stop blaming a divorce. Stop blaming your husband. Stop blaming your parents. For God's sakes, people are blaming their parents and they've been dead for 10 years. Stop. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming this. Stop blaming that. Because every time you do that, you are putting success outside yourself. And that is the want of control. You want to control the government. You can't. But a state of control means you can control how you react towards what's happening in the government. Yeah. You don't have to be, nobody can make you feel anything. Victimhood is a story that is being repeated on a loop inside your mind. It's not real. And a lot of times these stories are going from positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. But here's the truth. You don't want either one. You want to be neutral. Because if it's all about being good and happy, well, you got to have sad and bad, you know, so you want neutral. You want to know. You want to connect the head by clarity of what you want, set your plan, set your goals, connect it to the heart, to your purpose, your values, using your imagination and the tools of faith and gratitude and connect that to the hand of integrity and service. That's how it works. And you then are responsible for your success. Anything you want to add to that, David? No, if oh, well, I feel like I said the same thing after every episode. Create awareness. That's yep. the big thing. That's the words that you're saying, you know, because that that shows a lot like who you are and what you relate with. Because like I said, if you're a victim, you're a Hurricane Michael victim or survivor. Yes. You know, who's fighting through it and who's just like, all right, well, this is it. Your success is in your hands at all times. Rebuilding is about you living in the growth energies and rebuilding your life the way you want it. Mm -hmm. If you're at peace and everything is right, then your life is right. If you're not, you need to rebuild the category that happens to be pulling you down. I got people that I coach that have amazing categories, but there's one life category that keeps pulling their life down. So that's where their focus has to go in order to create that life of mastery. This is what we want. We want to become masters of our life. That's it for today's show. Our mission here at Stress Mastery Podcast is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.